Hello everyone and welcome back to CountryCast. Today we are going to be talking about one of the most incredible and decorated actors of our time. And that is the man himself, Mr. Kevin Michael Costner. Kevin Costner has had a very long and successful career in the entertainment business. But in a moment, we are going to share some things with y'all that you may have never known about the longtime Hollywood star. And just before we get to the meat and potatoes, let's take a look back at where it all began for Costner. Kevin Costner was born back on January 18th in the year of 1955 in a city located inside of Los Angeles County known as Linwood, California. Compton, California is where Costner spent some time growing up, but due to his father's career as a utilities director for the Southern California Edison Company, he moved around quite a bit and battled with making friends. However, one thing that Costner never struggled with was knowing that he was interested in the arts. During his teenage years, Costner enrolled in piano lessons, authored poetry, and even sang in the choir at church. Fast forward to 1973, Kevin Costner graduated from his high school, Villa Park High School out of Villa Park, California. After high school, Kevin Costner went off to college where he attended California State Fullerton. Even though Costner earned a bachelor's degree in marketing and finance, it was what he studied in his last year of college that helped shape his career path. During his last year of college is when he became interested in acting and dancing. And after graduating from California State Fullerton, Costner continued on with his passion for acting and began taking acting lessons five nights out of the week. Quite a bit of acting lessons back to back to back to back. But let's just say, after Costner realized his passion for acting, well, the rest is history. Since the beginning of his film and TV career, which started back in 1981, Kevin Costner has starred in a multitude of films and shows that are considered timeless and will forever be remembered. And here are just a few of those titles which proves that theory. You have The Untouchables, Bull Durham, Field of Dreams, Dances with Wolves, which we are going to talk more about a little later on in this video, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, The Bodyguard, Wyatt Earp, A Perfect World, Silverado, Open Range, No Way Out, and Fandango. Again, that's only a few of his films. Clearly the list can go on and on, and that's just films. But what about TV? You have the Hatfields and McCoys, and of course the most recent TV series in which Costner stars in right now, and that is none other than arguably one of the most popular television shows of all time, and that's Yellowstone. As in any movie or television show, Kevin Costner makes you believe that the character that he is portraying is a real-life character, and he also takes that part and makes it specific to him, like John Dutton in Yellowstone. I mean, is there really anyone else out there that could actually play the role of John Dutton? Kevin Costner is John Dutton. But for the sake of argument, I'll let you slide if Sam Elliott was one of your choices. Sam Elliott, of course, being a great actor. But Kevin Costner as John Dutton may be one of the most defining characters of his career. So after the quick glimpse at Costner's background, let's go ahead and dive into some really interesting and unknown things about the legendary Kevin Costner that you may not have known. Let's kick things off with number 10, which surrounds one of Costner's most memorable films, Dances with Wolves. What is not only interesting, but quite remarkable about this title is that Kevin Costner put himself in a category that few are even a part of. Kevin Costner not only won the Academy Award for Best Director, but it was his very first film that he had ever directed. Talk about an achievement, and of course, in this same movie, he played the lead role as Lieutenant John J. Dunbar. A lot of moving parts there for Kevin in this film. But Best Director was only one of the Academy Awards out of the many others, such as Best Picture, Best Writing, Best Cinematography, Best Sound, Best Film Editing, and Best Music. That's quite the list. Dances with Wolves is no doubt one of the most epic westerns to date, and Costner winning the Academy Award for Best Director on his first ever directed film puts him alongside only four others to do it. 
While we are on the topic of westerns, let's keep it going at number nine. We all know that the western film genre has been a big part of Costner's career, and it's clearly a passion, but what influenced him to seek out that genre? Yes, Costner is from out west, the state of California, but he actually credits the 1962 western film How the West Was Won. Costner has stated in the past that How the West Was Won formed his childhood. Costner first saw How the West Was Won during a birthday party that he was attending, and during the 2019 Western Heritage Awards, he had this to say about his experience with the film. I don't know how the other kids did it, but I never moved. I was too small for my seat, and my feet must have stuck straight out, because I know they never hit the floor. The music was playing before the curtain opened, and when it did, it was like God spoke to me and the scales came off my eyes. I never left my seat, refusing to leave even at intermission. Candy and Coke, they were just not important. I wasn't going to miss a thing. And if you think my own pictures run long, then you can blame it on that day. How the West Was Won deserves a lot of credit for producing the caliber of actor that Costner is today. And I'm a big fan of Westerns, like I'm sure many of you are. So let's keep it in that category going into number eight. Number eight comes in two parts. First, we all know Kevin Costner plays a great cowboy and does it many times. But is that what he really prefers in the Westerns? Well, in an interview with Parade, Costner revealed that he would rather play the role of a Native American. Costner told Parade, I much rather wanted to be the Indian. I felt the freedom, how they had to coexist with the land. Sign me up for that anytime. So maybe sometime in the future, Costner will finally get his shot at the role. And to back up the idea of Costner being fit for any role in the Western genre, and what helps him portray the character so well, is that Costner actually rides horses and is a skilled rider. Unlike many other movies where an actor or actress will have a stand-in or a very short scene to make it all happen, Costner really lives his character and enjoys the art of horseback riding. Switching gears now for just a moment, even though Kevin Costner has had quite the lustrous career in Hollywood, there were a couple of moments the star probably wishes that he could take back. For number seven, one of those moments is back in the year of 1995. You may remember when Costner's movie Waterworld hit the box office. Waterworld nearly put an end to his career. The post-apocalyptic action film did not receive the best reviews from critics and fans. Now the wild thing is, is that it was considered the most expensive film ever made at the time with a budget of nearing $172 million. You would think with that amount of coin thrown at the movie, uh, it would be epic. But unfortunately in the States, it did not perform well at all and only grossed $88 million out of the box offices. Not to mention Kevin Costner and the director Kevin Reynolds did not see eye to eye during the production. Reynolds ultimately quit the project and in turn, Costner had to finish the film out as the director. If there is one film Costner could either redo or take back, again, I would guess it would have to be Waterworld. Number six on the list is another time where Costner did not come out on top, but this time it surrounds a role in a film. A very popular film, might I add. Kevin Costner went for the role of Wren McCormick in the hit movie Footloose. Could you imagine cowboy Kevin Costner in Footloose? I mean, he did partake in dance, so it may have been a great role for him, but of course, as we all know, Costner missed his chance and Ren McCormick went to actor Kevin Bacon. While we're on the topic, Tom Cruise almost got that part as well, but again, Bacon stole the show. Pretty interesting stuff there about Footloose. Now, number five, we look at another role that Kevin Costner almost had the chance to play. And again, it is a role that is outside of the Western genre. Kevin Costner almost played the role of Batman in the 1989 movie, which ultimately featured Jack Nicholson as the Joker and Michael Keaton as the Batman. Kevin Costner was passed over for the role due to director Tim Burton being more interested in hiring a smaller actor at the time. Michael Keaton is clearly a household name in Hollywood and arguably one of the best Batman uh, that we know now, but at the time, Costner was much more of a star than Keaton. 
I still would love to hear Costner say the epic line, I'm Batman, just one time. Number four takes us back to the Kevin Costner and Kevin Reynolds duo. This time, however, we look at Costner's popular film, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. What many of you may have noticed in the movie is that Kevin Costner makes no attempt at establishing an English accent. Well, that's because Costner just couldn't find it. To the point where he tried and had a coach for it, but ultimately it was decided that fans would be a bit distracted by the rough attempt at the accent and it would be beneficial to just have Costner play the role without one. The awards and accolades run strong with Costner, but apparently accents are not in his repertoire. Number three takes us back into Kevin Costner's days before he became a famous actor. So what kind of work did he do before the big screen? He held many jobs to include carpentry, marketing for a very short period of time, and he even provided guided tours of Hollywood stars' homes. Sports were never a job for Costner, however, he did enjoy football, basketball, and baseball. Basketball being his favorite sport. He was asked how he got into basketball by The Guardian, where he said, I started playing in the streets when I was growing up in Compton, California. I began playing the traditional American sports, basketball, baseball, and American football, and found I liked basketball best. My parents did not have enough money to spend on other games, such as tennis or golf. They cost $4 a day to play, but they wanted to give me a rounded sporting education. I would stay out late playing basketball until the streetlights came on and my father came looking for me. Now moving on to number two, ironically number two coincides with number three, and that's Kevin Costner's height. Even though basketball is his favorite sport, Costner was not always tall. Now Costner is measured at 6'1", but at the end of high school, if you can believe it, he only measured five foot two inches. On the big screen, he looks to hold quite the stature, but it took some time for Costner to reach his height of 6'1". Moving in to number one, last but not least, Kevin Costner and country music. Kevin Costner and Modern West is his band and is a mix of rock and country music. The band was founded by Kevin Costner and he is also the front man of the group. As of now, Costner and Modern West have released four studio albums, Untold Truths, Turn It On, From Where I Stand, and Famous for Killing Each Other, which is the music from and inspired by the Hatfields and McCoys. Of course, many of you may have noticed that they are on the Yellowstone soundtrack as well. Kevin Costner and Modern West not only reach fans here in the United States, but they are known globally. You can check out Kevin Costner and Modern West on all digital platforms right now, and I think it is safe to say that Kevin Costner is a jack of all trades and has been very successful in all of his ventures. Outside of the entertainment business, he is also known as a businessman and author. From the start of his career to now, the legendary cowboy has made his mark, and Yellowstone is proof that he is still going strong and holds all of his work in very high regard. There is no doubt that Kevin Costner will go down as one of the greatest entertainers of all time. Guys, with all of this being said and hearing all of what we have heard about Kevin Costner and the great things that he have, has done throughout his life and is continuing to do, we got to know what's your favorite movie or show that Kevin Costner has ever been a part of down below in the comments. But that will be it for today's video, guys. If you are new here to CountryCast and would love to see more documentaries on your favorite actors, country artists, whatever it is that we come up with, hit that subscribe button down below. Remember to turn those notifications on as well so you never miss out on any breaking updates surrounding your favorite country artist and all the news coming right out of Music City. Y'all stay country.